Tying a horse up is one of the most valuable skills you can teach them. It can help build self-confidence, it can help teach them patience, and it can help them even with trailer loading. So in this video, I'm gonna show you three knots that are really crucial for every horse owner to know when tying your horse up. So the first knot that I'm gonna show you is tying the halter. So a lot of people use rope halters these days, and um, this is the knot that we're gonna go for. And the way we tie this knot is by uh, feeding this part. We're gonna call this the post. So you're gonna go through the post, then you're gonna go around the post and back through, okay? And that is the halter knot. Now, there's other ways to tie it. This way works very well. I use this every day. Um, the mistake that a lot of people make when tying this knot is they do the right knot, but they do it in the wrong spot. A lot of people wanna go around this part and tie the knot up here. And the problem with this is if it's too loose, if there's a short end here, it can get pulled out or if a horse pulls back, it can get so tight you can't get it undone. Whereas if you tie it around the post, so through the post, around the post, and then back through here, even if a horse pulls back and it gets a little tight, usually you can come in and bend that backwards and then you can loosen it up easily. So if you're wanting to tie your horse up to a hitching rail, but you wanna be involved and not committed where you're not gonna tie him solid because maybe it's a green horse or something like that, um, I would encourage you to wrap the horse. So when you wrap a horse on a rail, go underneath the rail and then around. So right now we have one bite, now that's two bites, and now that's three bites. And a bite is a, a knot terminology that's pretty important to understand because every bite you make is gonna be a point where there's friction to what you're tying. And so a three bite knot are the ones that I'm gonna show you coming up here. Um, but in this example, for tying them to hitching rail, I'm gonna test it now, so based on the um, the, the diameter of this rail and the texture of it, three bites is probably not enough. That was, it was a little too easy to pull through. Um, if you went up to the tack room, you'd be wondering where your horse went when you got back. So here we'd make four bites and we're gonna test that now. So again, and you wanna test this pretty regularly because if there's moisture in the rope, um, if the texture changes on the rail, it can, it can make it more, have more or less friction to it. So if I test four bites, now I can still pull that free um, so I'm, the horse isn't gonna like hurt themselves if they pull back on it, um, but it's enough uh, resistance there that um, the horse is probably still gonna be here if I run to the tack room quick. Now, let me show you the knot that we're gonna use for this. So on a rail like this, a common knot that I might use is called the bank robber's knot. And the idea is that it's a quick release knot. Um, before I get to that knot, I wanna show you another commonly used quick release knot that I would not recommend because it's not a three bite knot, which means if you tie your horse to it, there's a chance that um, they're gonna get in a situation where they pull back, you're not gonna be able to get the knot undone. So this is a quick release because I can pull this and it'll come free. But if a horse pulls back um, with that knot, I'm not gonna explain how to do it, but this is a common knot um, that people use here. Um, where you just, you're basically just wrapping it around and coming through here. And if a horse pulls back on this, because it's not a three bite knot, it'll get so tight that you can't get it, you can't get it undone. It'll make this a little too much pressure. You can even see just by me pulling on it there, there's quite a bit of pressure on that and it it's, uh, ends up not being a quick release. So now I'm gonna show you a bank robber's knot and this is a three bite knot. So I'm gonna fold the rope in half like this and I'm gonna put it over the hitching rail. Now, I'm gonna let the lead rope part um, go in the middle, and it's gonna go under and over uh, this, this fold here, and then it's gonna go under and over the line that's attached to the horse. So under and over. Then I'm gonna make what I like to call a key. The key goes in the lock, and then you pull that snug. Now, that's gonna be a three bite knot, and even if a horse pulls back on it, you're still going to be able to come around and get it undone quickly, hence why it's called the bank robber's knot. All right, so let me show you that again a little bit slower. So again, I got my, my uh, fold in the rope here. The lead rope starts off in the middle, comes under and over, and then I go under and over the horse lead, make a key, key goes in the lock, and then pull it snug. Now you have to have that adjusted right because when you do pull the slack out of it, it usually makes your lead rope quite a bit longer. So you gotta factor that in when you're tying this knot. Now if you wanted to put a lock on the knot, so right now if the horse played with this part, um, it would come undone. So I can put a lock on it where I just make a half hitch in the rope and then the same thing, put the key in that lock and now the horse would have to fuss around with this a bit more before they could get, get themselves undone. That's the bank robber's knot. 
So let's say that you have hauled your horse somewhere and you're maybe on concrete or you're in a high traffic area and something could scare them. You don't want to tie them solid to the trailer. I, I personally don't. If I'm going to tie them to the trailer, I use what's called a blocker tie. And um, this eliminates the need to tie a knot. And it's a way that you can be involved and not committed again. So you, so this is the blocker tie here. You fold the rope here and tuck it through and it just goes around. It kind of looks like a snaffle bit, half a snaffle bit. And um, that's gonna have some resistance as you can see, but the horse could still get free, um, you know, if they had to. So this works really well if you don't wanna risk breaking your trailer or having your horse uh, get injured on concrete or something solid like that. So it's a really good option. I also put these in my horse trailer. Um, so that's a little quicker to tie. And if something were to happen, they fell down in the trailer for some reason, we could get this undone pretty easily. So I think it's a way again, to be involved and not committed with tying your horse up. Um, there is a way you can tie this to where it locks down a little stronger and you take the tail of the rope and you fold the, you bend this back and you put this just through there one more time. That just adds another bite to it. And now it's basically they're tied solid with it. So occasionally you might want to use that, but for the most part, the blocker tie works really great for teaching horses to tie without risking them injuring themselves. So blocker tie is a handy tool to have in your tech room. So now let's say um, you have to tie to something that's high, maybe a tree branch if you're on a trail ride, or in this case, um, I'd like to tie horses that are green to tying um, high so that if they pull back, they can't push as hard as they could. If they could get all four legs underneath them, they kind of end up leaning back and they, they can't push as hard with their front end. And so uh, tying a horse high, tying them long and tying them often is gonna be a really great thing to do with your horse. Okay, so tying them high means tying them to something high. That's pretty self-explanatory. Tying them long means let them stand here long enough until they get really settled and, and just really quiet and fall asleep here basically. Um, you know, if they're still, you know, whipping around back and forth or pawing, probably leave them tied there a little bit longer and um, do it often, do it frequently. So when I tie them, when I say I tie them long, usually, you know, they're tied here a couple of hours when we're done riding before we put them away. Um, tying them often, we do it every day. And so it's, it's a great place for a horse to learn some self-confidence and some patience. So you definitely want to add this into your program. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to tie a stockman's bowline. So I'm going to start with throwing the rope over the rail and I'm going to throw it twice. And what this does is it puts a little more of a bind on it so it doesn't slide like it would if I just had one, uh, one loop over there. Now, the benefit of this is I can tie this knot right here instead of up there. And so what you're gonna do is you're gonna use the horse lead line here, the horse side of it, and put a half hitch in it. Then with the tail, you're gonna set the tail over that half hitch, do one wrap around the half hitch, change hands, reach over the lead part, so the tail, you can see it goes under and then over and I make a key. The key goes in the lock and you can pull that snug. And uh, this is a great way to tie your horse, um, again, if there's something high. I'll show that again one more time. This is called the Stockman's Bowling. So I half hitch, you go from the bottom to the top here. I don't know if it really matters, but that's how I do it. Set your tail end over, take a wrap, change hands, gonna reach over the lead line, make a key, key goes in the lock, and then go ahead and pull it, pull it snug. Okay, now again, if you wanted to put a lock on it, you could just put this through here like that, um, or you could do the half hitch if you hadn't had enough uh, rope left over. And so there's a couple of ways that you can lock that down afterwards. So that's uh, some knots that you might need to know. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Hope it gives you some good uh, tips on tying your horses safely. And if you would like to have um, more detailed training videos or be able to ask me questions about training your horse, consider joining my Patreon page. I'm gonna leave a link in the description below and we'll hopefully see you guys there.